Hello, can somebody confirm you can hear me? Yes. Great. I don't know why, but I was looking for the lecture and <laughs> couldn't find it. And then I said, oh, that's right. I'm supposed to be taking the lab now. <clears throat> don't ask me why. Ah, uh, let's see. I did the same thing when I was trying to log in. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the lecture, get into the lab. Yeah, I didn't do it in time. All right, before we begin, are there any questions? <clears throat> Not hearing anything, so let's begin. Today is January 23rd, <clears throat> and we are supposed to be doing the uh, lab three on microscope basics. Please note that you'll have a quiz tomorrow, and it'll be quiz one on chapters one, 10, the start of chapter two, and over labs zero, one, and two. Uh, let me state that I have done some grading. And I've almost got lab two graded. I think during this this lab, uh, while I'm just sitting around waiting for people to ask questions, I will be grading and I'll probably get the lab two finish graded. I think there's only maybe four students who I need to grade the uh, lab for lab two. And then lab zero and lab one are graded. Let me state that there are some students who are struggling in the lab and you students should really get my help with the lab. So if you're not scoring too well on your labs, then you should uh, work on your answers. And if you need help, I'm here in the lab to help you. Meaning when I'm done lecturing, I'm just going to sit here waiting for questions. And most of the time there aren't any questions and uh, it's kind of uh, disappointing for me, but uh, I'll continue to do that. And like I said, I will log on until, oh, about eight o'clock and maybe 8.30, whatever I say when we're done with the lecture in the lab. But uh, <clears throat> I will log off once the last student has logged off. So if you want help, just work on it while you're still logged in, and I will answer any of your questions. Any question about any of that? I have a question. I'm sorry. I was late logging um, in, and I was wondering, is this, are we going over lab two still, or? No, we're lab going over we... lab three. We did lab two last week. Okay. I'm going to grade lab two. It Most of the students are graded, but I think there's four students I need to finish the grading, and I'll get that done, hopefully, in this lab. Okay? So okay, let's thank you. begin lab three, microscope basics. You need to pre-read pre the lab module, and then you need to also read the textbook and chapter three through the end of the section on compound light microscopy. I don't think that's too many pages. I don't have the page number here, but it's in the syllabus. <clears throat> in this lab, there are some video clips you'll want to watch. And then there's some online exercises. We have a uh, virtual microscope that you'll be working online. 
So we will not be doing anything with the real microscope, but we do have a virtual microscope for you. And the links are all in the lab module. I think most of them are in the uh, lab worksheet as well. All right. So the primary learning objectives for this lab, you're not physically going to be using a microscope. However, you should be able to, one, locate and name the parts of the compound light microscope, along with describing their functions. Two, be able to calculate the total magnification for each objective used, meaning the objective lens that's used on the microscope. Uh, three, know the guidelines for focusing specimens with the different objectives. We have four different objectives, the scanning lens, the low power lens, the high power lens, and the oil immersion lens. I don't use these terms except for the oil immersion. I use uh, 4X, 10X, uh, 40X, and then 100X. And the reason why I do not use these terms is the low power always confuses students because the low power is not the lowest, the scanning lens is the lowest. And then the high power lens is not the highest. It's the 40X lens. Okay. So don't get confused on these two terms. Dr. Volpe, um, are you um, trying to share your screen or not yet? I am. Am I not sharing my screen? Yeah, we can't see anything. All right. Thanks for letting me know. Mm -hmm. Let me... Uh... Get to it. Now oh, come on, Zoom. There we go. At least I'm recording. All right, you should see my screen now. Thanks for letting me know. <clears throat> Last time, some lab didn't let me know until I was like 10 or 15 minutes into the lab. So thanks, at least we got it early. All right, so the next objective, be able to estimate the size of a specimen when seen using the different magnification powers of the lenses. And uh, be able to understand the rules for proper microscope care. And then lastly, be able to define the terms associated with the microscope. So you need to memorize, why is that way up there? You need to memorize the names and the functions of these parts of the microscope. And we're gonna be talking about a compound light microscope. Um, remember a compound microscope, we talked about this in the lecture last time, or not today, but last week, uh, is a microscope that has two lenses that magnify. A simple microscope is a microscope that only has one lens that magnifies. So the parts of the microscope you need to know are the ocular lenses, also called the eyepieces. They do magnify. And the microscopes in the microbiology lab, they magnify 10 fold. The best microscopes, which I don't think Clark has, I know the microbiology lab doesn't have, uh, magnify 20 times. But most microscopes have a 10x magnification in the ocular lenses. And then there's the objective lens right here. And they're on a rotating nose piece that's right there. And the... Uh, Microscopes in the microbiology lab have four objective lenses, the 4X, the 10X, the 40X, and the 100X. You should know the stage. That's where you put the slide, the stage clip. That's how you move the slide around on the microscope. Trying to get five. Oops, too far. Five is the knob for controlling and moving the stage clip. 
Six is the iris diaphragm. Seven is the condenser. These two parts are always together. Uh, in, this, in this picture, the diaphragm is on top of the condenser. However, in some microscopes, the diaphragm is below the condenser. They uh, bring up a cone of light from the lamp, which is here, to the specimen, which would be here. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. You should open and shut the iris diaphragm, number six, so that your cone of light is equal to the size of your field of view that you are seeing with the specific objective lens, meaning the different objective lens have a different field of view. Eight is the coarse focusing knob, the big handle. Nine is the fine focusing knob, the little handle. 10 is the uh, switch for turning on and off the, the lamp of the light. 11 is the rheostat for turning up or down the intensity of the light. And it's not called a rheostat because the person who did this lab was from Australia and apparently they don't use the term rheostat. Uh, he calls it the light intensity dial. And then 12 is the lamp or light source, the light. Any question about any of that? Before I forget, I guess I'll point out the arm of the microscope is right here or right here. And uh, to carry the microscope, you put one hand on the arm and one hand on the base. So you're supporting your microscope with two hands. All right, there's the different parts and what they do. So these are the names of the objective lenses. And like I said, they're on the rotating nose piece. And these are the power of the objective lens, and I just call it the 4X lens, the 10X lens, the 40X lens, and the 100X lens, although sometimes I call the 100X lens the oil immersion lens. The total magnification is the power of the objective lens times the power of the ocular lens, which is here, and so you just multiply the power of the objective lens by the power of the ocular lens. So 4x times 10x will be of a total magnification of 40x. The 10x lens has a total magnification of 100x. The 40x lens has a total magnification of a 400 times 40x, 400x, sorry. And the 100x lens has a total magnification of a thousand times or a thousand x. Now that's assuming you have an ocular lens of 10X. Like I said, some microscopes, the most expensive microscopes have an ocular lens of 20X. The 4X lens has a depth of field that is deep. That means if you're looking at an object, hopefully you can see this. You're looking at an object under the microscope. If you're using the 4X lens, you might be able to see both the top of the object and the bottom of the object. And that's because the 4X lens has the deepest depth of field. If you go up to the next higher lens, the 10X objective lens, it'll be less deep. So maybe you can see half of the object in your depth of field. And you go up to the high power lens, it'll be smaller, the 40X lens. And then if you go up to the oil immersion lens, all you're really seeing is about a single plane through the object. 
and you can focus on the top for each layer of the object. But generally, you're only going to be seeing about one plane of the object. So it's very narrow, the depth of field. Any question about that? The field of view is how much of the slide you can see with the lens under the microscope, the uh, objective lens under the microscope. So the 4X lens has a very large field of view. And when you go up in power, you'll get a smaller field of view for the 10X lens and smaller for the 40X lens until you get to the 100X lens where you have a pen prick of your field of view. So it'll have the smallest field of view, the, the 100X lens. Some comments. The 4X lens is the easiest to use because you'll be able to see the object uh, with the deepest depth of field. So you'll be most likely to see the object with the 4X lens than any other lens. And it also have the largest field of view. I've got that over here. So this is the field of view. And if the object is over here, you will still be able to see it with the 4X lens. But if the object's over here at the 4X lens, and then you move up to the 10X lens, the field of view will be smaller, and then the object will no longer be in the field of view. Any questions about any of that? All right, the 100X lens is the hardest lens to use, objective lens, because it is the one with the smallest field of view and the narrowest depth of field. To see the object, you must be focused right in on it because the depth of field is so narrow. Any questions about any of that? Looking at an object under the microscope, it'll be more than just magnified. It'll also be inverted and reversed. For example, if you look at the letter E under the microscope, it'll look like this, magnified, inverted, and reversed. This lab says that the iris diaphragm is the most important tool in light adjustment. So I'm just telling you that this is what this lab says. I'm not going to argue about whether the iris diaphragm or the rheostat is the most important tool in adjusting the amount of light, but they both can adjust the amount of light. The iris diaphragm, on the other hand, also uh, is important for giving the contrast of the specimen against the background of the slide. And the slide is just going to be glass, so it's going to be fairly transparent. But if you're looking at a living cell in a wet mount, it's going to be fairly transparent too. And to be able to see it, with any clarity, you will need to have the best contrast between the specimen and the background of the slide. How you improve the contrast is by adjusting the iris diaphragm. The iris diaphragm, like I said, can open and shut, sort of like a camera shutter, which I guess you guys don't know camera shutters because I'm talking about the old Polaroid camera shutters. They had a, a shutter for opening and closing the amount of light. And I think uh, you might still have it even on a digital camera. I don't know. I'm not a camera expert. But uh, that's what the iris diaphragm does. 
and to get the best contrast between the specimen and the background of the glass slide, you want to have the iris diaphragm open to the right amount to get a cone of light equal to about your field of view. That means with the 4X lens, you should have the iris diaphragm fairly open because it has the largest field of view. And so you want the cone of light to be the same size or about the same size as your uh, field of view. If the light is open too far, you will have less contrast. And then if the uh, iris diaphragm is shut down too far, you will once again have less contrast. When you go up in power, meaning you move from the 4X lens to the 10X lens, you'll need to shut down the iris diaphragm to continue to get the best contrast. And that's the same with the 4X lens and particularly with the the 100X lens. I noticed uh, some students, when I was giving the uh, lab in the lab, meaning not an online lab, and students would complain, I can't see my cells hardly at all. And I'd look at the microscope and look at the cells and I said, oh yeah, I see, you can't see them very well. The reason is because you're using the 100X lens and you have the the uh, iris diaphragm open all the way. It should only be open close to all the way with the 4X lens. Even then it shouldn't be open all the way. It should be shut a little bit. And when you go up to uh, the highest magnification, meaning with the 100X lens, that uh, iris diaphragm should be closed down to a pen prick because that's the size of your field of view. Any question about any of that? All right. When you first use the microscope, you should use the 4X lens. The reason being is <clears throat> it's the easiest to use. You will be able to see the largest field of view, meaning you'll most likely be able to see the specimen because the 4X lens has the largest field of view. And then it also has the greatest depth of field. So you will be able to more easily focus in on the object because it has the biggest depth of field. You use the coarse focusing knob to slowly raise the stage up and bring the object into focus. Use the coarse focus knob to bring the object into coarse focus. Then use the fine focus knob to bring the object uh, perfectly into focus or finely focus it. From now on, you should not use the coarse focusing knob. You should only use the fine focusing knob. And if you uh, make a mistake and use the coarse focusing knob, you've just fouled up your focusing, and the best thing to do would be to start all over, go back to the 4X lens, uh, and uh, coarsely focus on the object, and then once again, finally focus on the object. The reason why you do not need to use the coarse focusing lens, except at the very beginning, is because our objective lenses have parafocal vision. That means when you're using one objective lens and then you switch to another objective lens, all of the objective lenses should be in focus. And that's what parafocal vision means. So you only use the coarse focusing knob with the 4X objective. And from there on, you use the fine focusing knob. All right, so once you get the specimen in fine focus with the 4X lens, you then move the specimen to the center of your field of view before 
switching the objective lens to move to the next higher objective, which in this case would be the 10x objective. The reason why you move the object to the center of your field of view is because if it's not near the center of your field of view, meaning it's off to the edge, and then you go to a higher objective lens, the object will not be in the field of view. And so you have to look for it again. So if you move it to the center of your field of view, the object will be in the field of view of the next higher power uh, objective lens. Any question about any of that? All right, you repeat step nine. Whenever you switch from one objective lens to the next higher powered objective lens. When you're switching from the 40x lens to the 100x lens, there is a special step you need to do. What you do is you take the 40x lens and it's the, the specimen is down here. You move it halfway out. You don't move it all the way out. You move it halfway out. That will move the 100x lens halfway in, but not all the way in, only halfway in. Having in both lenses halfway out, the 40x lens and the 100x lens will allow you to come in with an eyedropper or a very small tube uh, with the eyedropper built in for putting a drop of oil on the specimen. You then move the 100x lens from halfway out to bringing it into the drop of oil over the specimen. So that drop of oil will be big enough that the 100x lens will go through that drop of oil. That's how close the 100x lens is to the slide. We use oil with the 100x lens because if you do not, the 100x lens's magnification and uh, resolution will be no better than the 40x lens. So the only way you can get the 100x lens to really do its job, meaning get clarity and resolution, is uh, by using a drop of oil. And that's why it's called the oil immersion lens, because every time it's used, it should be used with a drop of oil. Uh, the reason why oil improves the resolution and clarity of the object under the microscope is because uh, oil has a refractive index the same as glass. If you don't use oil, then light coming through the glass slide will refract at the glass air interface. And then the light will also refract at the air light interface at the objective lens. And that means uh, light will be refracting two times before it, um, well, before it comes to the objective lens, meaning the light coming from the specimen will refract two times before it's collected by the objective lens. So if you use oil, you allow the objective lens to gather more light. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a later lab. I don't think it's this lab. I know it's not this lab. And uh, because more light is coming into the objective lens, and that's because none of the light's refracting away from the objective lens, then you'll collect more light and you'll get uh, better resolution and clarity of the image. Any question about any of that? All right.
if ever you use oil on the lens, then it must be cleaned. And you must clean it with lens paper. Uh, other paper, such as chem wipes or paper towels or any other paper, has wood fibers in it. Wood fiber will uh, scratch the lenses. And then you have to use that scratched lens all term long. And obviously that will interfere with your resolution and clarity of the object. And to tell you the truth, I have a feeling that the scratch lens would be continued to be used for several terms because uh, I'm pretty sure that Clark College would not spend the money to get new objective lenses for the microscope. And that's just because the objective lenses are the most expensive part of the uh, microscope. Any question about any of that? And don't quote me when I'm saying something like the college is sort of cheap and they're not willing to buy more objective lenses each term. Just don't scratch the lens and then there will be no need for that. All right. Oh, I got to mention about lens paper. The reason why lens paper works to clean the objective lenses is it is paper, but it's been paper that's been treated specifically to remove the wood fibers from the paper. So lens paper has no wood fibers in it. And that's why we use it to clean the oil off the lenses. All right, let's talk about the activities. Online students will not be performing this activity with a real microscope. Uh, however, uh, we do want you to understand this activity. So that's why we put it here and you do need to go through it to use the microscope or practice using the microscope as well as uh, perhaps answer some questions in the lab meaning the worksheet. You will be expected to know this information and especially the information, the table, which we have filled in for you. Um, and the table gives the different sizes of the field of view for the different objective lenses. You should also understand the formula for hitting the size of the field of view for the different uh, microscope objective lenses. So let's talk about this lens. I mean, this table, I <laughs> want to say lens. Uh, for the 4X lens, it has a field of view a 4.5 millimeters in diameter. That's 4,500 micrometers. For the 10X objective lens, we have a field of view of 1.8 millimeters or 1,800 micrometers. For the 40X lens, we have a field of view of 0 0.45 millimeters or 450 micrometers. For the 100X lens, we have a field of view of 0 0.18 millimeters or 180 micrometers. Now, if you were actually going into a real microbiology lab, we would give you a uh, ruler and the microscope and ask you to obtain these numbers by measuring the size of the field of view. Uh, because you don't have the ability to do that, and we can't send you a microscope or even a ruler, um, we filled in the information in this table for you. You need to use this table to estimate the size 
of a object in the specific field of view of the objective lens. For example, if you're using the 10x objective lens and then the specimen fills up 50% of your field of view, what is the estimated size of the object? Can anyone answer? I mean, I could answer, but that really won't help you. Point 0.9? Yeah, point 0.9 is correct. Point 0.9 millimeters. And that's because the field of view is 1.8 millimeters. And if we have an object that's filling up half of the field of view, then that object is uh, point, uh, 0.9 millimeters. So you'll need this table to estimate the size of the specimen you're observing. In activity two, you're gonna be observing a prepared slide. You only need to look at one. You can look at others. And you'll be doing that online on a virtual microscope. Online students won't perform this activity, but you will be doing the virtual exercise and completing the laboratory exercise at the end of this document, meaning answer the questions of the worksheet. We expect that you will know and understand the material in this exercise. Any question about any of that? So I'll let you read the uh, exercise. And then we have activity three, making a wet mount. You're not gonna be making a wet mount because you can't make a wet mount online, but hopefully you've made a wet mount in your preliminary biology course. If you have not, you need to know what a wet mount is and how to make one but we will not ask you to perform this because you can't do it on a virtual microscope. And uh, we're not gonna test you on this procedure. So it's here for your benefit if you've never made a wet mount. And uh, why this is kind of important is, is that if you take microbiology, people are going to assume that you know how to make a wet mount. Any question about any of that? All right, let's talk about the microscope storage protocol. Online students will not be handling a real microscope, but you are expected to know how to correctly handle and store a microscope. When you're all done, you should lower the stage all the way, remove the slide and put it away if you used oil immersion, you'll need to wipe off the oil from the 100x objective lens using only chem wipes, not chem wipes, only using lens paper. You should also remove the oil from the slide. Uh, slides are very cheap. So we don't care uh, which paper you use to remove the oil from the slide. Either regular paper towels, chem wipes, or uh, uh, it's fine to use uh, tissue paper as well. All right, so getting back to putting away the microscope, you lower the stage, remove the slide, if you used oil, you need to remove the oil from the 100X objective lens. Oh, there's something else I should talk about. You should also check the 40X lens to see if oil got on it when you're using the 100X lens. The reason being is, is that if you leave the 100X 
objective lens for any reason, and then you move the 40X lens through the oil, the 40X lens is low enough that it will touch the drop of oil. And then you'll get oil on the 40X lens. And that's why you need to check the 40X lens to remove any oil that is uh, any oil that is on the uh, 40X lens or the 100X lens. Then you move the 4X objective lens into place, meaning if the 4X lens is not directly where the over where the specimen was, you move the 4X lens into place. You lower the light intensity knob, meaning the rheostat. You switch the light off, unplug the microscope, and neatly wipe the cord of the microscope around the microscope. Number seven, we're not going to do because I don't have my students do that. Number eight, also use both hands when you're carrying the microscope from your workbench to the cabinet where the microscope belongs. How you do this is you uh, put one hand into the base of the microscope and the other hand on the arm of the microscope so that you can carry it. And then you put the microscope back into the same cupboard that you got it from. And you put it away in a proper, in a proper, what do you call that, uh, orientation. For example, this cup is going to represent my microscope. And this will be the back of the microscope that has the eyepieces. So this is why I'm thinking of it that way. And this would be the front of the microscope, which is the opposite side of the back of the microscope. So you put the microscope in the same cubby hole, like number 11, and put it in the same way you got it out so that the eyepieces for our lab at least are facing out towards you, and the front of the microscope is facing the wall. Because that's what's in front of the microscope. All right, any question about any of that? So know the terms of this lab, and then we will begin the laboratory exercises. Let me go to the worksheet for that. Oh, crud. There we go. So you need to view the following video clips. You should watch the video on how to focus a microscope. You should also watch the video, this one here, for using oil on the microscope meaning you're going to use the 100X lens, so you're going to add a drop of oil. And then uh, when you're rotating the nose piece, you don't rotate the 40X lens over the drop of oil because the 40X lens is low enough, not quite as low as the 100X lens, but it's low enough, close enough to the slide that it will pick up oil in the drop of oil over the specimen. All other uh, resources like gold mines or dragon mines, whatever that's called, uh, well springs, other crypts. If it's in free territory, it'll be uh, what am I talking about? Uh, I think I got uh, confused there. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, there's also a video to watch on putting oil on the microscope. And then this is the link for using the virtual microscope. If you have a slow internet connection, it will take a little time to add. 
I've got a fairly fast internet connection and you notice that this is taking a while to load before it uh, is uh, one you can use uh, on the, the uh, on your computer. You won't be downloading anything with the virtual microscope. It's just using the browser and this web page. There are different places you can look at. You can uh, look at the options here. I'm just going to point that out. Uh, let me go back and go. Oh, good. It went back on its own. Um, the options uh, are not something we're going to use. We're only going to use the Explore, but I just wanted to point out uh, this will change the settings for using the virtual microscope on the on your computer. Uh, this you might be interested in. It's the test on the care and usage of the microscope, a test on the calculating uh, the magnification of the microscope, and then test on terminology. So this is in challenge mode. And here's the question here. The mechanical stage allows for adjustment of the slide position forward, backward, and left or right. So I think that should be this mechanical stage um, control allows for adjustment of the slide position forward, backward, and left or right. So that would be the... Uh, now that's more than moving the, the uh, stage adjustment knob. Oh, it's moving the stage, the uh, slide... Um, slow slide holder over the stage. That's, so that's the great answer. Uh, two, some microscopes feature a rotating arm pivot point that can be adjusted to allow for more comfortable viewing. Uh, the downside of this adjusting the microscope is that wet samples may run off the slide. I'm not sure what they're answering here. Let me blow that up so I can read it better. Some microscopes have a rotating arm, which ours do not, pivot point that can be adjusted to allow for more comfortable viewing. We can adjust the eyepieces. The downside of adjusting the microscope is that wet samples may run off the slide. Um, I'm going to guess this one, but I'm not positive. Not right. Let's go to one. No. The method by which the specimen is distanced to the objective lens is adjusted to provide sharp, a sharper image. Depending on the microscope, this adjustment will either be made by moving the stage or moving the tube. I think that's the stage adjustment knob. Because it moves the stage. Uh, and the other thing is that to some microscopes it doesn't move the stage. It could move. I'm not sure what the slide would be. It could move the uh, uh, the objective lens down towards the slide. There we go. Incorrect. Oh, focus. Oh, this is trying to make a sharper image. I didn't understand that. Okay. Well, I got that one wrong. <clears throat> See, I'm not doing too well on this either. But uh, that's just a quiz in case you want to take some tests on using the microscope. Uh, let's go to the Explore. This one you need to do for the virtual microscope. 
And generally in this virtual microscope, you click on the question mark. And you want to look at the plant slide. I suggest looking at the onion root tip because I've got a question in the, the uh, worksheet, I think on the onion root tip. Uh, this is looking at the specimen under the microscope. And here the 4X lens is circled for this is using the 4X objective lens. You can move the specimen under the microscope. Now, in reality, you'd be moving the slide around to do that. But we need to bring it in coarse focus. Let's do that. Someplace around here, maybe about there, and then get it in fine focus to finely focus. It's hard to finely focus because these are so small. And then go up to the 10X lens. Uh, what you need to do is move the object into the center of your field of view, which it is, and then go up to the 10X lens. Someplace. I think that might be it or there. I'm not seeing it well enough to be certain. Let's look there or there. Let's go up to the 40X lens. Oh, actually, it's right here. There is a, a slide with uh, chromosomes in it. And I just wanted to go there because that's a little bit more things to see than just a regular slide. So this is a, a slide going through division and the chromosomes are replicated. And it looks like they're just beginning to split at this point. I Meaning this one will come this way, that one will go that way. And then let's go to the 100X lens. To use the 100X lens, you gotta add immersion oil. Question mark is something you do. And you you do for uh, adding the immersion oil, you need to move the 40X lens halfway out and the 100X lens halfway in. So you have room to get in there and put the drop of oil. Put the oil there and then rotate the 100X lens through the drop of oil and only use fine focusing. Find focus on the object. Now let's see if I can find the bacteria with, oh, there it is there, with the chromosomes. All right, any questions on the virtual lab? Oh, let me mention this, how you can uh, increase the light. Any questions on this? Let me go back to main. I think we're done here. Once you're done with the virtual microscope, we have a link on practicing naming the parts of the microscope. You need to press play to begin this. There's the play button. And then come up to the piece up here and tell me which one of these is the resolving nose piece. If you guess it right the first time, you will be green. And now it says stage clip. And I'm going to guess it wrong the first time before getting the stage clip. So there's the stage. It'll go boink. And then you say, okay, I'm going to guess this one. If it's the second time, meaning you guessed wrong one time, it will be yellow in color. For the arm of the microscope is that. I'm going to do it wrong once again by uh, selecting two misanswers. So that's the bong again. There's the bong again, meaning it's not correct. And uh, then the arm of the microscope is here. You'll notice that one question missed will be yellow in color. Two question mix will be a dark yellow in color, or you can say orange in color. And then 
Uh, let's see, it says for the base, I'm gonna go here, which I know is wrong, but that's not letting me do that. I'm gonna go here, here, and then lastly, here. Uh, if you miss all three, it'll tell you what the answer is. It'll be in purple. And that just went to red, probably because it gave another question. Yep. Anyways, if you you uh, miss all three and then get it right, it'll be uh, purple. And if you get it wrong, it will be a red color if you miss three. Any question about any of that? All right, let's close that down. And then work on the worksheet. Don't use the uh, lab module for answering the questions. A four, fill in the blank with the correct answer. When focusing a specimen, you should always start with which objective lens? When using the low power, high power, and oil immersion objectives, only which focusing adjustment knob should be used? The finer the coarse focus. Uh, C, 4C, the type of microscope used in the lab is what? And you'll notice we have a two word answer. If you only answer one word, you will get only partial credit. So to be completely right on this, you gotta get Two words for naming the microscope. And don't name it by the brand name, like some of our microscopes in the microbiology lab are made by Nikon. So don't tell me a, something like a Nikon light microscope, because that's incorrect. I want you to tell me the, the uh, type of microscope it is. And that was the type of microscopes were mentioned in the in the uh, this lab. You should carry the microscope by putting holding on to the the what part of the microscope with one hand, and by supporting uh, what part of the microscope with the other hand. Four E. The objectives are attached to this part of the microscope, which can be rotated to click different objective lenses into place. So what is this part of the microscope called? Uh, 4F, a microscope had an ocular lens of 10X and a high power objective of 40X. What would be the microscope's total magnification? Uh, G, when the stage is moved left, the image viewed through the ocular, meaning the eyepiece of the microscope, the image will move in which direction? When the stage is moved forward, the image viewed through the oculars will move in which direction? Nine. Excuse me, H. Uh, which objective lens provides the largest FOV? FOV stands for field of vision. And I, which objective lens has the smallest field of view? Uh, 4J. Of the methods for light adjustment, which is the most important on the microscope? And then 4K, how large is the field of view when using the high power objective lens? And you can get this from the table in the lab module. Um, I believe your questions will say, uh, state this number in millimeters, meaning give me a measurement in millimeters. Uh, can somebody confirm that? Yeah, it says millimeters or nanometers. Okay, great. And then number two, suppose you have a typical bacteria cell, which is...
two micrometers in diameter. And the circle below, which represents the field of view when using the oil immersion objective, state how many cells can fit across the circle under the oil immersion lens and provide your calculations for making the measurement for full credit. Any question about any of that? At all. I have a quick question, Dr. Volpe. Um, is it just the uh, worksheet portion of the lab that we're turning in, or do we need to turn in anything for like the exercises, like one and two as well, like the videos and the? No, you don't need to turn in anything else, like the uh, videos or the so, virtual microscope. Okay. Somebody, thank you. I think you have the your micro your. Um, microphone on if you could turn that off because we're getting some background noise like somebody talking or somebody uh, listening to the radio or uh, the television all right if there's no questions go ahead and get started in the lab um, I will be here until 8:30 to answer questions. But once the last student logs off, I too will log off. <laughs>